I feel so honored to be giving the last talk of React Finland 2022. So thanks for being here. And um, especially I'm happy to be talking about a topic that is as important as accessibility. So uh, more specifically, I will uh, focus on accessible navigation in single page applications. But first I will tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Rosa Kallionpä and for the last one and a half years I worked as an UX and accessibility specialist at Efficode. So in practice I've been uh, conducting user tests and accessibility audits to a variety of customers and products. And this has been a natural continuum to my uh, master's uh, or double masters in human computer interaction and design, which I did abroad and had a great time. But my relationship with React actually started already when I was doing my bachelor's here in Finland and I worked as a full stack trainee. Mm, even though this job was probably what got me into UX, once I realized that with that I can help not only end users but also developers, uh, I still sometimes notice myself thinking from the developer perspective. Like for example, the stuff that Avis was just talking about. Uh, when I started coding, well, <laughs> my code was like a mess pretty much. And I thought it's because I'm so user centric <laughs> that I only care about what the end users see. But what I didn't really consider is that not all end users see. And so the thing that I really love about accessibility once I really got into that is that it offers such a direct link between the developers and the users. And so I hope that uh, you will exactly find the motivation to, uh, to contribute to accessibility. So let's talk about building accessible spas. Uh, as most of you here know, uh, I'm not talking about wellness centers, but single page applications. And the reason why I'm talking about SPAs is because they do not perform page loads. And this means that screen readers um, and further the browser don't notify uh, screen reader users about page changes. Instead, um, if they are uh, navigating element by element, focus remains uh, at the last element and no change can be perceived whatsoever on the page, be it small or or big, and uh, yes, it can even happen that that element in focus completely disappears. Uh, so then it might jump, the focus might jump anywhere. So this is what we need to tackle. Um, focus management is such a central aspect of uh, accessibility, and I, it's not as straightforward to explain or to fix than giving an element like a role or a name. So that's why I wanted to do it personally today because I don't always have the time during my uh, customer meetings to go in depth about it. Not that I can do it now, but at least I can give you this case. If you're ever building an SBA, you know how to approach it. And then hopefully you'll start thinking it in other scenarios as well. Uh, I'm not the first one to talk about this <laughs> by any means, but as we all know, sometimes it might be difficult to pick out the right tutorial out there if you're not familiar with it. So I hope that after this talk, again, you will be able to make your own solutions. Uh, I divided this talk into three sections that represents the aspects that you should consider uh, with SPA navigation. First one being managing titles, so updating, announcing the page context, um, managing focus, which helps the user to navigate, and finally managing history, which allows restoring pages. So let's discuss titles first. And uh, because they are so related to page changes, I need to clarify that throughout this talk, confusingly enough, I will talk about pages and page changes, <laughs> even though it is an SPA. So just know that I'm referring to that event when the whole page purpose changes, not only some of its content. So usually you would have like a main navigation where uh, pressing links would 
cause a page change, for example. So I hope we're all on the same page on that. Um, yeah, so indeed, titles should be updated whenever this type of page change occurs, such that a sighted user will then see the tab bar update. Um, also, the history will store the title name, and also search engines really like titles. So remember to keep those up to date. I'll talk about the format in just a bit. Now, I said that sighted users can see it change, but the issue is that whenever a new page is viewed, uh, screen reader users don't really uh, get that information. And a bit of a naive approach would be then to be like, hey, we need to get the title somewhere so that screen readers can read it. And um, for this, if you just learned about ARIA, you maybe know about live regions which are these type of areas that the screen reader will read out loud whenever the text content updates. And then you could just put it in the document body and make it visually hidden so that only screen reader users kind of encounter it. But there are several issues with this approach. First one being that it's a bit complex to implement for you and it might confuse screen reader users to encounter that title in the document body also when they navigate through it. Um, of course, you could time out the text content, but that would make it even more complex to implement. But the main reason why I do not recommend this is because using this ARIA Live uh, attribute on a region, while you also need to remember, move the focus somewhere on the new page, might cause one to overwrite the other in the screen reader output. So in practice, it might happen that only the new title gets read or then the, doc the element that gets focus, um, uh, the information about it is announced. So you don't want to do this. And the main uh, or one very important thing about accessibility is that you have so many different combinations of web browsers and screen readers that with any sort of um, sketchy solutions. You don't know how it's going to play out uh, in the wild when people are using uh, different uh, tools. Okay, so how can we tell page context to screen reader users? The, um, uh, as you heard on the first speech uh, of this accessibility section, every page should have exactly one uh, heading with the level H1, so a main heading. Sometimes this would exclude the front page, but most of the time you would have uh, this main heading and it complements the page title. Um, it still gives the same context, even if it's not word to word the same, because page title is also something that each page should have uh, a unique one. Usually it also includes the service name, but, and the page name might be a bit more concise such that it matches the page name used in navigation. But more or less, main heading is at least as descriptive. And to be fair, even as a sighted user, I would say that I might be more likely to look at the new heading instead of the tiny title in the tab bar uh, change. So this is a nice segue to the next section, managing focus on page change. So if we've decided that the main heading will suffice for giving context. We could just move focus to it and th then kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> Not that I love that saying. So in React, you could, for example, create a component which essentially just returns the H1, but whenever its text gets updated, it grabs focus to itself. Um, now, in theory, <laughs> you could handle the page change, uh, page, uh, document title uh, change here as well, but don't roast me for suggesting it. For the demo's sake, you probably would want to handle that somewhere else, which fits your um, framework, like maybe React Helmet. But uh, the idea is that now you can, at the same time, move focus and um, such that screen reader users know that they landed on a new page with a new main heading. Uh, again, something you already heard, um, tab index 
should be given to all attributes that get focus, but note that here you can use tab index minus one, meaning that it can be programmatically focused, but it doesn't have to be in the keyboard focus order because it's not like anyone really wants to interact with that after it has been focused on a page load or page change, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, yeah, so then I mentioned, okay, maybe you don't have, uh, like there's this one exception that you don't have a uh, main heading and that's the front page. So just to explain, like in this case, yes, you can move focus at the top of the page. And um, also if you didn't know that each uh, page in an accessible application should include a skip link which is a type of link that you can uh, use to navigate directly to the main um, uh, section of the page rather than go through the navigation each time. Uh, it's for, uh, useful for keyboard uh, navigating the page. So here, for example, the skip link could be that element which grabs focus to itself depending on the page where it's located at. So. Keep in mind, I will come back to this, two elements should never grab focus at the same time, so make sure that the skip link doesn't act the same on the, all the other pages which have a H1. And also, you could just have the H1 here, so then screen reader users would also get the context, which they now are lacking a bit. So, just saying. Here you don't need the tab index though, because it's a link. Uh, one thing about skip links that I want to mention since I'm talking about it is that it's common practice to keep it visually hidden so that only when it gets focused, then it can be seen. And this is just because not all users need it. Great. So that was all uh, about page changes, but then we have this, all these other changes that may occur on a page and require uh, focus change and where you might want to apply the same logic of kind of manually giving focus to an element. Uh, I will give a few examples, but the bottom line is that you should be cautious with them. It is also stated in the accessibility criteria that the focus should never change unexpectedly. So you can play with um, a lot of other attributes in order to um, so, such that the user knows what's happening and where they might want to go next. And another thing is that two different elements should never be focused at the same time. Like I already mentioned, it will uh, lead to this conflict where you don't know what will happen in practice. Um, but the possible scenarios are when the element that was just activated disappears, um, or multi-page forms and models, which I will uh, go through in a second. Another point, you can make use of uh, different uh, components that have built-in focus management. Uh, so you have toolkits and design systems. So shout out to Helsinki Design System and of course Bootstrap, which already have good accessibility, accessibility features in a lot of their um, components. But yeah, in some cases where it doesn't work uh, in the way you would want, I will <laughs> give you an example of what would make sense and where it is justified to change the or move focus. So for example, if you have a multi-page form which might be even quite lengthy, then it would make sense uh, after the user has navigated at the bottom of the page where a next button is located uh, to move it back on top at the top of the form because they will, uh, it's very much expected that they will continue filling it out. So then you could move focus to the header of that section, even if it's not a uh, main he header, sorry, heading. And in this case also, it would act more like an event listener for the button, because in this case, for example, it doesn't, uh, the, the text in it doesn't change. And with models, um, well, <laughs> when you open them, you should make uh, sure to move focus to the model. And you can do one of two things. Again, you can focus the, the heading, which should be an H2 level heading, but you can also uh, focus the whole container of the model and give it like an aria labeled by attribute, which refers to the text in the heading. 
so then it will be automatically read by the screen reader. But yeah, it doesn't really make a huge difference uh, in the amount of tab uh, presses. And then uh, when you close it, which I will mention, you should have the close button early on in the focus order within the model, or, or actually also uh, make it possible to close it with the ESC key. The focus should go back to the element which opened the model. And then uh, the, oh, I just pressed the tab key because I was talking about it. So then the whole rest of the page we don't want to interact with. So it, you should make it, um, like leave it out of the focus or order completely when a model is open. Um, you can uh, use React focus lock for this, but again, uh, for example, bootstrap models work just fine. So you don't need to worry about it. Okay, now we have also gone through the focus uh, change scenarios, or some of them at least. But you can inform screen reader users without moving the focus. Every time you want to tell them something, you don't need to uh, like, uh, force them to navigate at a different part of the page. And for this, you would use ARIA status messages. So for example, um, the role alert, you can give it to a heading or a toast, uh, whatever you want, and then when, it, uh, when it's mounted, it will be read out. Um, for example, if you are filtering out your search results or saving data to settings, uh, you do wanna know that it was successful. And then a bit lower priority one would be the role status which uh, can, for example, if you're adding items to shopping cart, uh, announce how many items are there currently, which cited users can usually observe somehow. And for example, progress bars are another good example where periodically the progress can be announced. And um, yeah, I recommend you to check these out um, and use them whenever you need to notify users and which do not re uh, require immediate action. I think there is also like an alert dialogue which would require the user to confirm that they have read it. Yeah, and just a very common uh, point about adding structure to your app. Uh, I've mentioned like going directly to the main content or skipping the navigation. You should have um, everything in your page contained by one of these programmatic areas. And uh, those are, and use semantic markup again. So avoid roles whenever you can. <laughs> uh, so the main tag or role main, uh, the nav tag or role navigation, header tag or role banner, footer tag or role content info, and a side tag or role complementary. And if you have two of the same type, like navigations, for example, side navigation and main navigation, differentiate them with unique ARIA labels. So then um, they, they don't get uh, uh, mixed. Fine, that was uh, all about focus management, both keyboard focus and user focus. And then we can talk about history management. This is actually quite straightforward because, um, well, yeah, in order <laughs> to uh, be enough, uh, I mean, give you enough information, you need to support history browsing afterwards so that all pages get stored in the history and also that the back and forward buttons work as expected. For example, we heard that in all mobile apps, this is not the case, but let's hope that in your web service, it would work. Um, so if you correctly use React Router and Next.js Router, it will automatically push pages to history as long as all of them have a clear link to them. Uh, so you don't need to worry about uh, pushing each page uh, yourself. But there might be some uh, within pages changes when you need to consider if you want to store them to history. For example, again, form inputs and also list pagination. Like say you're at the page 500, uh, maybe you wanna come back to that later. And then you might wanna uh, include some sort of interaction, uh, especially let's take a scenario where you are saving data um, with, a, with a button uh, press. 
So then that could be a good moment to save form input data because like apply filters or save settings because you don't want to <laughs> make every input change a new, uh, like you don't want to save every input change to history. And this is especially if you're gonna then redirect the user to a new page, you might have to manually push this state to the history, um, to the browser history, because then um, they can find it later if they accidentally uh, or didn't mean to go uh, to a new page yet. Yeah. But um, finally, I hope that with all this information, you will contribute to the making of built-in accessibility uh, by at least choosing the component which has built-in accessibility. But uh, if you are more <laughs> than uh, just like a low effort programmer, I really hope that you also do uh, run that extra mile to make your app more accessible because with that we can then um, hopefully in the future have more built-in accessibility and it wouldn't uh, require uh, so many uh, different tricks. And um, yeah, in the end I hope all of us are here to help people and to make lives better. So do consider that if you are still um, unsure about accessibility practices, I will uh, recommend checking out accessibility casts by the Google Chrome developers. They are a bit uh, like an oldie but a goodie. They have also live demos of this focus management on a page change with SPAs that I just explained with like a vanilla JavaScript uh, demo. And there's also Axicon talks about, they also had like React um, focus management strategies talk this year. So that's um, worthwhile. But yeah, that's about it. I will still go through my points so that <laughs> we have some sort of uh, picture of what I just went through. So on the page change, uh, focus the main heading and update the page title. Um, make sure that any interaction triggers no more than one focus change and use status messages to inform users without moving the keyboard focus. Finally, you should ensure that pages can be restored from the browser history um, and also some of their information. You can find the link to the code snippets and the, a very simple demo here uh, and also thanks for the creators <laughs> uh, on Unsplash for giving pictures to my talk. But yeah, uh, I hope I see you, if not at the Q&A corner, at the after party. Thank you very much.